The U.S. topping 5 million cases nationally. That is now a quarter, roughly, of all the cases around the world. And it comes with unnerving news about children. The American Academy of Pediatrics finding 97,000 children contracted the novel coronavirus between July 16th and July 30th. Young people are almost immune to this disease. The younger, the better. I guess they're stronger. They're stronger. They have a stronger immune system. It's an incredible thing. Nobody's ever seen this before. We have to have our schools open. We have to protect our teachers. We have to protect our elderly. But we do have to have our schools open. So many states opening up their school doors. That is including Florida, where I am right now. All of that coming right now as other states have seen outbreaks, Georgia being one of them. A high school in Dallas, Georgia, spotlighted for packed hallways last week, now having to close down to in-person instruction only for at least Monday and Tuesday after nine cases there. If you look at children, children are almost, and I would almost say definitely, but almost immune from this disease. So he's not just claiming that kids are immune, which is false. He's also claiming that they basically can't spread it, which is doubly false extremely dangerous. That's what he's insinuating there. That, oh yeah, kids can just be a hotbed of germs in their schools and they won't spread it to any adults when they go home to adults, presumably. I know he's an adult and doesn't spend too much time with his kids, but that's how it generally works in terms of the adult parent relationship. So even if you give him that first false fake claim that kids are immune, the second leg of it is enormously concerning and why many teachers are terrified about the prospect of going back to work without any protections whatsoever, just so Trump can perpetuate this fake sense of normalcy so he can try to salvage his re-election bid. Here's the study that was cited in that earlier piece about nearly 100,000 kids testing positive for coronavirus in the weeks leading up to schools reopening. As schools face the daunting challenge of reopening while the coronavirus continues to spread, at least 97,000 children around the United States tested positive in the last two weeks of July, according to a new report from the American Academy of Pediatrics and the Children's Hospital Association. It says that at least 338,000 children had tested positive through July 30th, meaning more than a quarter tested positive in just those two weeks. The report comes as some schools have tried to reopen, only to quickly order quarantines or close their doors. States in the South and West accounted for more than 7 out of 10 infections in the new report, which relied on data from 49 states along with Washington, D.C., Puerto Rico, and Guam. The count could be higher because the report did not include complete data from Texas and parts of New York State outside New York City. Missouri, Oklahoma, Alaska, Nevada, Idaho, and Montana were among the states with the highest percentage increase of child infections during that period, according to the report. New York City, New Jersey, and other states in the Northeast, where the virus peaked in March and April, had the lowest percentage increase of child infections, according to the report. The report noted that children rarely got severely sick from COVID-19, but another report from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention highlighted how the threat from a new COVID-19 related condition called multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children, or MISC, has disproportionately affected people of color. The CDC said that from early March through late July, it received reports of 570 young people ranging from infants to age 20 whose symptoms met the definition of MISC. Most of those pa patients were previously healthy, the report said. About 40% were Hispanic or Latino, 33% were black, and 13% were white, the report said. 10 died and nearly two thirds were admitted to intensive care units, it said. Symptoms included a fever, rash, pink eye, stomach distress, confusion, bluish lips, muscle weakness, racing heart rate, and cardiac shock. So that eliminates both of his premises, just does. We do not know enough about the virus to categorically say that, oh, children just aren't affected. This has only come on the scene, only been on the scene for a few months, but we already know everything we need to know. We already know everything we need to know. And trust us, because hasn't that worked out in the past when it comes to COVID-19? And of course, the ultimate under-discussed element of this, the racism and the dehumanization of children of color who are disproportionately affected by this and the classism that comes with that. It's not a coincidence that Trump sees them as basically invisible and as impediments to his narrative, his marketing, when it comes to reopening schools. 
They're the ones disproportionately affected by things like this, those children. They're not at the forefront of his mind. And that says everything.